This is the second of two videos talking about section 5.1. In this part, I'll be talking about sigma notation. So recall that we talked about Riemann sums, which is a way to approximate the area under a curve by using a bunch of rectangles. Each of those rectangles has area f of x k star times delta x. f of x k star here was the height of that rectangle, and delta x was the base of that rectangle. So that's the area of an individual rectangle. And then we want to add up all of the rectangles to get our total estimate of our area. And because we do these sum things quite a bit in calculus, uh, we have a special notation for it, which is called sigma notation. So the symbol here that looks like that, that is a capital Greek letter sigma. And it's used to indicate a sum when the things that we're adding all look very similar. They don't have to be the exact same thing, but they all have to have a similar form. So here's an example of a simpler sigma notation so we can break this down and understand what this is saying. So k here is what's sometimes called the index variable. And that's a variable that's going to be changing as we go through the sum. This 2 here is the starting value of k. And then the 5 that's on the top here, that's the ending value of k. So k is going to start at 2, it's going to go up by 1 every time, so 2, 3, 4, and then it's going to end at 5. And then this expression here, 2k plus 3, that's the actual expression that we're going to be adding. So this sum is equal to, we start at k equals 2, so we get 2 times 2 plus 3, and then we take 2, plus, 2 times 3 plus 3 using the next value of k, and then 2 times 4 plus 3 using the next value of k, and then finally 2 times 5 plus 3. And then we add all the results together. So 2 times 2 plus 3, that's 7. 2 times 3 plus 3, that's 9. 2 times 4 plus 3, that's 11. And 2 times 5 plus 3, that's 13. And we add 7 plus 9 plus 11 plus 13. That works out to be 40. This type of process might be familiar to you if you've done any kind of programming. This might be similar to a loop or a for loop uh, in a programming language you might be familiar with. So part of what we want to make sure we know how to do is to evaluate a given sigma notation just like we just did. So again, we're going to have an index variable. It's not always called k. It can be really called anything. The bottom value is the starting value. The top value is the ending value. We go up by 1 every time and plug into the formula that we're given. So in this case, we've got the sum as j goes from 5 to 10 of j squared. So we're going to start at j equals 5 and plug into that formula. The formula is j squared, so we start out with 5 squared. The next value is 6, so 6 squared. Next value is 7, and so on. We can then compute all those values, add them all up. This works out to be 355. Next one's pretty similar. We have multiple i's to plug into, but that's okay. You just take your value of i and plug it in everywhere you see it. So in this case, we're starting at i equals 1. So our first value is going to be 1 divided by 2 times 1 minus 1, and then 2 over 2 times 2 minus 1. And we're going to keep going until we get to i equals 3. Or sorry, i equals 5. That should be minuses on the bottom, minus 1, minus 1. And then 4 over 2 times 4 minus 1. And then 5 over 2 times 5 minus 1. So 1 divided by 1, that's 1. This is going to be 2 thirds. This is going to be 3 fifths. This is going to be 4 sevenths. And then finally, 5 ninths. We add all those together. When we work all that out, we get 1069 divided by 315. Okay, so now a slightly more challenging problem was to take a given sum and rewrite it in sigma notation. So if we have the sum 7 plus 10 plus 13 and so on, all the way up to 307, and we want to write that in sigma notation, we have to figure out how to reproduce that pattern using a formula. So a good default to think about is to have a sum that starts at 1 and ends at we're not sure yet, and then we're going to try to figure out a formula that goes there. So let's start by trying to figure out a formula that causes this pattern. So if k starts at 1, we want to go when k is 1, the next value of k is going to be 2, 3, 4, and so on. The pattern that we're looking for, I'm leaving an extra space there for a reason you'll see in a second, 7, 10, 13, 16, and so on. That's what we're hoping for. 
So what you might notice is that each of these numbers is going up by three. So we're adding three, we're adding three, we're adding three, and so on. So what's a simpler pattern that would also cause my numbers to go up by three every time? Well, a pattern that would work for that part of my pattern would be to simply multiply k by three. Three times one is three, three times two is six, three times three is nine, three times four is 12, and so on. So this middle column has that right pattern, but it's not the right numbers. I've got three, six, nine, 12, rather than what I want, which is seven, 10, 13, 16. So now we should think to ourselves, how can I modify these numbers? What do I do to these numbers that would get me the pattern that I actually want, which is seven, 10, 13, 16. And hopefully what you see is that what I need to do is add four. So the pattern that I want, the formula for this pattern that I want is gonna be three K plus four. So that's what I'm gonna write here in these brackets. And now the only thing I need to figure out is where will this pattern end? I need to end up at 307. And the question is, what value of K corresponds to 307? Well, I know that this is gonna be 3K plus four for some value of K. So I just solve to figure out the value of K. Subtract four from both sides, divide both sides by three, 303 divided by 3 is 101. And so that's what goes at the top of my, frac of my sigma notation. So a little bit of detective work, a little bit of sleuthing around can help us figure out these patterns. Let's do another one. So again, we've got a sum here, 9 plus 11 plus 13 plus 15 plus 17, and we want to try to find a sigma notation that goes with that. So again, I'm giving you the fact that I want you to start at k equals 1, and so there's two things we need to figure out. We need to figure out a formula, and we need to figure out the final value of k. So let's look at the formula. What we want is when k is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, we want our pattern to be 9, 11, 13, 15, 17. What we notice is that the, these numbers are going up by 2 every time. Because they're going up by 2 every time, one way to make that part of my pattern happen is to multiply k by 2. 2 times 1, 2 times 2, 2 times 3, 2 times 4, 2 times 5. But that doesn't quite give me the exact right numbers that I want, so what do I have to do to those numbers to get the actual pattern? Again, hopefully you can see there that what I need to do is add 7. So 2k plus 7, that's going to be my formula in my sigma notation. Now what, what goes at the top? Well, there's a couple of different ways to see this. Probably the easiest way is to notice that I have five numbers here. And so if my k is starting at one, then ending k at five is gonna give me five things to add together. And so that's gonna work out. The other thing you might notice is that if I wanna set my pattern 2k plus seven equal to 17 and solve, I also end up with k equaling five. So a couple different ways to find that final value of k there. So you'll learn more about sigma notation in Calculus 2 for those of you who are moving on to that course. Uh, we'll use, do a lot of sums in sigma notation and, and talk a lot more about this. But for now, the basics that we've talked about in this video will be sufficient.